checking conditions of bottles, making sure everything's served at the right temperature. Uh, I had to keep the room nice and cold just so uh, everything doesn't warm up, especially in uh, warm Melbourne summers. Um, got all the glassware in, everything's uh, polished by piece, so 14 dozen uh, pieces of regal glassware. So we spent most of yesterday um, getting all that prepped. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a fun job uh, just opening all the bottles. I think this is the first time we've ever had to open 34 Grand Cru's in a row. You know, I've had uh, one or two in restaurants uh, Maybe get them in service, but uh, to see 34 of them all in a row, same vintage, it's going to be insane. One of the most, ex well, it's the most exciting tasting I've ever been involved in in 25 years. To have the whole 38 Grand Cru's in front of you is unprecedented in my life, and I think probably, I don't know if anyone else has ever done this exercise before in the room. No? No? <laughs> and you know, it's, a, it's an exercise that is, becoming, it's not only difficult to set up a, a good bracket of Grand Cru's because they're now becoming very expensive, but also they're scarce. The great producers are hard to get. Um, so in that regard, they're sort of becoming the, the parish of Russian oligarchs and the like, rather than normal wine aficionados and lovers. Um, so it's a great pleasure to welcome you here today. There are many people who have come from all corners of Australia to be here. We've got people from Perth, um, the Sunshine Coast, Toowoomba, Sydney, of course, Melbourne, Adelaide. Sorry, Tony. <laughs> but so we've pretty much got all the states covered. We've even got a Tasmanian. Well, morning, Mark. Uh, welcome to Prince Wine Store. We've got a big tasting on today. And uh, I was just wondering, in your time with the Chevalier Taste Bar, have you ever experienced a tasting similar to this? And what do you expect to get out of today's event? Uh, clearly, I've never had a, a tasting anything like this before. I think this is a, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to do a horizontal tasting of uh, the great Grand Cru's of Burgundy. And I think uh, I think 13 is a good year to represent the terroir, and I, I, uh, I I'm really looking forward to to looking at the nuances and the, and the differences in these wines as I go through the uh, appellations. We've got six brackets today spanning. Um, all of the Grand Cru's. Do you have a Do you have a, a thought of um, where you expect your preferences to lie from the different communes? Where Where you would uh, hope to see your favourite wines of the day? Well, like all Burgundy uh, lovers, I have preconceived ideas. I personally uh, love Chambol, and uh, I'm really looking forward to trying the Chambols. Uh, one would be naive not to be excited about trying the uh, Bon Romanais, particularly the top end Bon Romanais. I think they'll be the highlights. Then you have the power and the, and the might of the Gevrier, of course, and the subtlety of the Moiré. It goes on and on, really. We assume a little bit of knowledge at this level, but by all means, if you have questions about Burgundy, there are plenty of people around the table, and there are no stupid questions, as Sister Leone used to tell me in grade two. So please yell them out. It's, uh, it's a very collegiate, um, informal gathering, despite the formality of what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, so please don't be scared or shy to ask any question. 95 plus is gold. 90 to 94 is a silver. 85 to 89 is a bronze. The wines have been randomised. I don't know what they are. Um, Corey, who's the manager and head sommelier here, he's poured them, he's randomised them. Um, so we get to look at them without their labels, without any, anything in our minds already about their reputations. Call now, Schmack. Wobbly bracket of wine. 96. 2013 was incredible. There were so many highlights. The white bracket to start with was phenomenal. There was a series of absolutely brilliant whites. Uh, to wine of the day, possibly went to Latash. Also, blind, keep that in mind. 
It wasn't favouritism, there was no preconceived ideas. It just happened to shine today, along with Hudelo, Romani Sylvivant. For the Whites, again, serve blind. Uh, Henri Bio and Montrachet was the clear winner of the day. So it's nice to see those iconic wines kind of shine through in a blind tasting setting. Ran seamlessly, people loved it. Uh, I look forward to 2014. Let's do it again.